Hey, it's Candace, and today's QuickBooks tip and trick is all about credit cards. So recently, I've had a few clients who came to me and they're like, Candace, I have my credit cards are all screwed up. And so usually that stems from a couple different problems, but the main one being clients are summarizing their QuickBooks or their credit card statement and putting that into QuickBooks in one transaction. And what happens with that is, is if you're not entering in each individual transaction, each charge, each credit, you end up getting where stuff doesn't balance. And what typically happens is, is you start looking at it after the whole year has gone by and you're getting ready for your taxes. So if you're not entering in each individual credit card transaction, so each time you charge your card, at the end of the year, if you're not reconciling it, which is a huge thing to do, it's really how you know that you entered in everything accurately, you may be paying too much money in your taxes because you've missed some expenses. So come look over my shoulder. I wanna teach you how do you enter in your credit card charges? And this is my tip for you. Enter, as soon as you get your statement, your credit card statement, sit down, have within a day or two, and enter in all your charges because what happens is if you wait till the end of the year, you'll sometimes forget what they were for. You don't think you will, but people do. Sometimes a month is even too long for some people. So um, make sure you're reconciling your credit cards, your bank account, and any loans you have, preferably each month when you get your statement. So that way you can keep up on it. And if you're a busy entrepreneur, you are able to just kind of do a little at a time as you get your statements. So come look over my shoulder. I want to teach you how do you enter in credit cards. Okay, so I'm not sure if you guys already have credit cards set up or not. So I'm gonna, the first step we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to set a credit card up inside of QuickBooks. So we're gonna go here under lists, chart of accounts. We are gonna go down to account, add new. We're actually gonna select a credit card. And I'm just gonna make a, a credit card name, credit card. This, what you'd normally write here is whatever your card is. So let's just say you had a Capital One. That's a good example, a Capital One card. If you already had a balance before you started using QuickBooks on that card and you don't know what all the charges were for, you can click Enter Opening Balances, find your statement prior to when we're gonna start. So if your credit card statement Let's say you want to enter, you just want to start using QuickBooks for the year of 2015. You're going to find your credit card statement that ended prior to the January 1st date. So just say your credit card statement, usually they're weird, they come out, they end at like the 16th or the 21st, or they're usually not the 1st or the 31st. So if that's your case, then you're going to have a credit card statement starting sometime in December that goes from December through January, whatever the opening balance is. Let's just say for example, it was a thousand dollars. And that was as of December 18th of 14. Because you wanna make sure that you enter, you can go ahead and enter all of the December transactions from that, that are on that statement and then anything that goes on into January. So that way you're not missing any of your January statements. And credit cards are considered cash basis, which means the moment you charge the card, they assume you're going to make the payment. So it's a business expense at the moment you charge the credit card. So even though December is going to be in there and you're only keeping track of 2015, there'll be a few transactions for December, but they will not impact your profit and loss for the time frame you run in, in 2015. So I hope that makes sense. Just know you can enter in transactions in December of the previous year and they will not affect your income and expenses for the current year. So you'll find your statement. You can enter in the balance, the date of the statement date. Not the due date of your payment, but the statement date. And then you're gonna hit save and close. We're not gonna set it up for online. We'll close that. So now when we go in there, we've created a credit card and the opening balance is $1,000. You can enter your credit card, you can get to the credit card charges, um, entering credit card charges in two ways. Banking, enter credit card charges here, or in the banking center, you'll see down at the bottom it says enter credit card charges. Now these are the charges you charge on your credit card, not the charges that maybe you have as a merchant provider. So if you charge somebody's credit card for services you provide, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is your personal credit card, your business credit card, when you go out 
and you pay for your fuel or different things that you purchase through your business credit card, travel expenses for the business, those kinds of things, you're gonna enter those into QuickBooks. So you're gonna click enter credit card charges in one or the other way. They both take you to the same place. If you have more than one business credit card, you can enter multiple. Just make sure here at the top, you have the credit card that you wanna enter the credit card charges against, meaning the card you used. So the area here is the vendor. The vendor is the place you spent the money. So let's just put in Office Depot. I like Office Depot as an example. And let's just say we're gonna enter in the January transactions and we're gonna say that January 5th, we went and bought some office supplies for the new year and we spent $100 even, for example. You can put the memo in of how you spent the money there. Then you can put in your expense category. Now, up here, I wanna go back for a second. The top is Capital One, that credit card we added. This is when you purchase something, and then this little section is if it's a refund, and you'll notice it changes it. So if it's a charge, you wanna make sure you select that. And then you'll notice it has our balance that we said it started with. We picked our vendor. Vendor's a place we spend money. You'll see there's all kinds of different things in here. And then the date that the transaction happened on the credit card statement or your receipt. If you wanna enter in an invoice number or something like that, you can here. You don't have to. The amount that you spent, the memo, if you wanna put in what it was for, what type of expense it was, the dollar amount you spent, another memo if you want. If it goes against a particular job, job costing, and if it's billable, you can actually select billable there. That's as simple and easy as it is. You can attach a file, so you can actually scan something and submit it if you want, and QuickBooks will keep track of it. And you can download your transactions. I typically have people enter each transaction, because even when you download it, there's still work that you have to do to make sure it goes to the right places. Then you're gonna hit save and new, and that'll bring you up to enter your next credit card transaction. And you're gonna go through, and you're gonna enter in, let's just say 7-Eleven on the 9th, and we're gonna say we spent $45 for fuel. Fuel automatically populates because it's been used before. $45, it's not for a particular job or customer, and it's not for, and I don't wanna bill that customer. So then you're gonna click save and close once you've entered all your transactions in. So you'll go through your whole statement, you'll enter each individual one to where you spent the money, to the dollar amount of the type of expense, and then when it's all said and done, you're gonna go up under banking here and click reconcile, or you're gonna click here. It's the same as your bank account, but we're gonna do it for your credit card. So click reconcile, and you're gonna go in and you are going to select your Capital One and you're gonna put in your statement date. So let's just say we think that the statement ended January 16th, and we're gonna put in $1,000, and we entered in a transaction for 145. So we'll just do this. And we didn't have any finance charge in this example. If, if you had a finance charge, you can actually enter that in, the date, and then you can decide which type of account you want. Maybe you have finance charge and QuickBooks will actually enter that as a business expense for you. Click continue. I deleted that because I didn't have any in this example. Then you're gonna come in here and any credit card payments, if you had entered a payment, would show up. That would be you're paying down your credit card or you return something that you purchased on your credit card and the credit card company gave you a credit. That would show up here. And then you're gonna select you're gonna match, you know, yes, this was on my credit card statement. Yes, this was on my credit card statement. So my beginning balance was 1,000. I had $145 in charges. So my ending balance that I entered was 1,145 and my clearing balance between what my balance previously was and my charges and transactions matches. And you always wanna make sure it says difference is zero. Now, a little tip and trick I'll give you. If you are way behind here trying to catch up, if you check mark this little button, Anything beyond the statement date that you're currently reconciling will disappear. So just say we're into March or April, you're watching this video and you're going to start from the beginning of the year. I recommend you enter all your credit card charges, then reconcile it, enter all your credit card charges, then reconcile it. But if you already have credit card charges and you haven't been reconciling, 
you can actually check mark this little box. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If for any reason this doesn't match, you can always click modify and change. Maybe you accidentally entered the wrong ending balance or you forgot to enter your charges. You would enter it there. Okay, and then click continue and then hopefully it matches. Never reconcile your account if this difference is anything but zero. If it's zero, you're good to go. If it's not, you've missed something. And that's the whole purpose behind reconciling this. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you know somebody who could benefit from it, please share it. And if you have any QuickBooks questions, please leave a comment below and I'll create a video for you. And if you wanna keep up on the current videos I'm creating to see all the new ones that come out, please subscribe. Have an amazing day. Take care, I'll talk to you soon.